Today we are going to talk about adding current limiting to our linear power supply project. For the documentation for this project, and if you'd like to study electronics technology and prepare for a career as an electronics technician, see the links below in the description. This video is going to be a little different from the previous ones on this project because I'm going to be working here at the whiteboard instead of at the desk. This is because things are getting so cluttered at the desk that you're not going to be able to follow along, so we'll just follow along with a schematic on the whiteboard. Before we start talking about current limiting, let's take a quick review on how the circuit works. I'm not showing the transformer, the rectifier, or the filter because we've discussed that enough. We have coming off of the rectifier and filter 16 volts DC. The heart of our circuit is this operational amplifier. We haven't discussed operational amplifiers in the course yet, but we have discussed how they work in this circuit. All we need to know is that the operational amplifier will change its output voltage to whatever it takes to make its two input voltages equal. So the non-inverting input goes to the cathode of this Zener diode, which is at 12 volts. The inverting input is monitoring the output voltage of the power supply and the op amp will make its output voltage, which goes to the base of this transistor, whatever it takes to make the output voltage equal to this voltage, so we have an output of 12 volts. There are two common approaches to current limiting in a linear power supply. The one we'll look at first is putting a resistor at the collector of this pass transistor. Now whatever current goes through the transistor has to go through the resistor first, and as we already know, Whenever current goes through a resistor, we're going to get a backup of voltage where the current enters the resistor and a drop in voltage where the current exits the resistor. This voltage, 16 volts, is going to be pretty steady because the impedance of the transformer and the rectifier and the filter is very, very low. It's going to take a lot of current before that voltage is going to start to drop. So as this voltage must be higher than this voltage as the current increases, this voltage will have to drop. So this voltage will stay steady, this voltage will drop as we increase the current. As long as this voltage remains above our output voltage, the circuit will continue to work. As we increase our current, the voltage at our collector will get lower and lower, but the op amp will compensate by raising the base voltage at the transistor to whatever it takes to keep the output voltage at 12 volts. However, once this goes below 12 volts, there's nothing the op amp can do, so at that point, our voltage will start to drop. So we need to choose this resistor such that at the desired current limit we have 12 volts at the collector of the pass transistor. Actually we will have a little higher than 12 volts there because like any other component as current goes through it we do get a voltage difference across it and we can expect about eh, half a volt across this transistor when it starts to go into the current limiting condition. So let's put up there that we want about 12.5 volts at the collector of the transistor. So we're starting with 16 volts and then we're going to lose about three and a half volts to get to 12.5 volts. So the question now is, what do we want our desired current limit to be? Let's make it 100 milliamps. So we have, so we have 100 milliamps and we're going to lose three and a half volts from 16 volts to 12 and a half volts. Watt resistance will give us three and a half volts at 100 milliamps, and that is going to be 35 ohms. So now we have a circuit that when we reach 100 milliamps, this voltage will start to drop. Now what we've designed for here is a circuit that will deliver 100 milliamps at our desired voltage. So up to 100 milliamps it'll maintain its 12 volts, but once we exceed 100 milliamps this voltage will start to drop below 12 and a half volts. The op amp will no longer be able to compensate for the voltage loss in the output and the voltage will start to drop. The next question is, with this choice of resistor, what will be our absolute maximum current if we have a dead short on the output? In that case our load becomes zero ohms and we can expect zero volts across it. So this voltage will drop down to zero volts. And we can still expect about a half a volt across our transistor. Now that depends on the transistor and also depends on how much our current limit is. Some transistors may have a much higher voltage across there, but half a volt is kind of typical. So with this at zero volts 
and a half a volt across the transistor, we can expect probably about half a volt at the collector of the transistor. So now we have 16 volts and a half a volt, so there's 15 and a half volts across the resistor. How much current is that going to be? So with 15 and a half volts and 35 ohms, we can expect about 400 milliamps through that resistor. So our maximum current will actually be 400 milliamps with this design. So the design philosophy of this circuit was to deliver 12 volts with a maximum current of 100 milliamps. Once we exceed 100 milliamps, the voltage will start to drop and our absolute maximum current or our short circuit current ends up being about 400 milliamps. What if we want our absolute maximum current to be 100 milliamps? Well, then we design this around the short circuit condition. We assume that there's no resistance here, no voltage here, 0.5 volts here, so it's the same conditions we have already. But now, instead of allowing 400 milliamps, we only want 100 milliamps. So the question is, what resistor is going to allow 100 milliamps at 15 and a half volts? And that's going to be about 155 ohms. So before we start to design this circuit, we have to decide, do we want to design around a short circuit maximum current or keeping our voltage at our maximum current and then having a higher short circuit current? Now, the disadvantage of this design is that it has to be designed around a particular voltage from the rectifier and filter and a particular output voltage. And if those change, or especially if we want to have a variable output, this isn't going to work very well because as this voltage goes lower, it's going to change the needed resistor over here. Another thing to consider is the power being dissipated by this resistor. In this case, we have 100 milliamps and 155 ohms. We square the current, multiply that by the resistance, and that gives us 1.55 watts. So we need a 2 watt resistor in this case. When we had a maximum current of 400 milliamps, we square the 400 milliamps, multiply that by 35 ohms, and that gave us 5.6 watts. So in that case, we need a 10 watt resistor. And as we increase our input voltage or increase our current, that's going to get bigger and bigger. So another disadvantage of this circuit is that we need a fairly hefty collector resistor to dissipate the power that's consumed as we limit the current. A more popular way to limit the current in a linear power supply is to move the limit resistor over to the emitter of the circuit. As current flows through this resistor, a voltage develops across it, higher voltage where the current enters, lower voltage where the current exits, that voltage is placed across the base to emitter of this transistor. This is a small NPN transistor, such as a 2N2222 or equivalent. And we choose this resistor such that at our desired limit current, we get 7 tenths of a volt across this resistor. That puts 7 tenths of a volt across the base to emitter junction of this transistor. That turns on the transistor and it sucks current away from the base of the pass transistor. And that limits the amount of current that is able to go through this resistor. So we get a feedback loop here where the current is limited to whatever current gives us 7 tenths of a volt across this resistor. So let's say we want to limit our current to 100 milliamps. All we have to do is choose a resistor that gives us 7 tenths of a volt at 100 milliamps. So 0.7 divided by 0.1 gives us a 7 ohm resistor. So this circuit will limit us to 100 milliamps. And it's independent of the output voltage or the input voltage because it's only concerned with how much current is flowing through this resistor here. Let's take a look at how much power is being dissipated by this resistor. We have 100 milliamps and 7 ohms. So square the 100 milliamps, multiply that by 7, and we end up with only 70 milliwatts. So we're dissipating a lot less power with this design than with the other design. So the two advantages are it works with any voltage. We don't have to worry about designing it around our voltages and it dissipates a lot less power. Now, if you design and build this and do some measurements, you might find that you're getting a little more current than you expected. For example, here you might get actually about 120 to 130 milliamps instead of the 100. Why would that be? Well, we are pulling a considerable amount of current from this op amp, 20 to 30 milliamps, and that is coming out and bypassing this resistor and going out through your circuit. So we're getting 100 milliamps through this resistor, which operates the transistor, but we're also getting 20 to 30 milliamps in addition from the op amp. So we get just a little bit more. 
To reduce that amount of current, we could put a resistor between the op amp and the collector of this transistor. To find exactly what that resistor should be, you may have to do that by experimentation because it depends on the op amp and it depends on the transistor and may depend on other things. It also may depend on the actual amount of current being uh, limited at this point. But that could make your current limiting a little more accurate by putting a resistor here. This circuit will give us a maximum current or short circuit current of about 100 milliamps. But it will only give us about 60 milliamps before this voltage starts to drop. What if we wanted to maintain this output voltage all the way up to 100 milliamps and then have a higher short circuit current? To do that, we would have to reduce the value of this resistor. To determine that value may take some experimentation, but a good starting point would be to have this resistor develop about 0.4 to 0.5 volts at the desired current limit. Now this current limiting is fixed on the value of this resistor. If we wanted to have a variable current limit, we could do that by either making this a variable resistor or we could use operational amplifiers to develop some kind of a current limiting system. I don't want to go into that because we haven't discussed operational amplifiers yet and I don't want to go any deeper into operational amplifiers at this time. So we'll discuss that after we've discussed operational amplifiers. So the next thing we're going to do is finalize this circuit design, start to build it into a permanent board, and put that into a permanent case and have a working bench power supply. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.